Time now for our rants and raves. We're going to start with you, Dan. I have a rant uh, based on an item that Adam Gaffin had in his uh, terrific Universal Hub blog this week. Uh, he has rounded up. There have been at least four attacks on Boston TV journalists since July uh, in Copley Square, uh, the Forest Hills Tea Station, uh, a party in Taunton and a Trump event in um, in New Hampshire. And two of these four are clearly related to the politically polarized times that we're living in. And, uh, you know, come on, people, you got to chill out. Uh, TV news crews are out there trying to do their jobs. Uh, the problem is, unlike us print people, they're very visible. You know who they are and what they're doing. Uh, let them do their work mm. and, and stop with the foolishness. Yeah. Some of them, I, one of them I think was a mentally ill person, but still, I agree it with you. It did seem yeah. that way, yeah. All right, Callie. Um, I have a qualified ray for the WGN's latest attempt at uh, local and national news. It's really local in a national framework, and it's called News Nation. They're on every night, and I mean every night, um, and they're two hours. Um, this is a Next Star product. They, Next Star has 200 stations. It's based out of Chicago. They brought the anchors in from everywhere. Rob Nelson is from New York. Uh, Marnie is from Seattle. Nicole Burley, who used to be here at Channel 5, is one of the weekend anchors. And they, their whole thing is balance, not bias. That there, There's no commentary, they say. We're just going to present it to you. And when there are those stories that are a little bit dicey, we're going to be very focused on making sure that we weed out all the stuff that might cause people to yell at the TV screen. Hmm. Um, it's been pretty interesting so far. Um, I get a little tired of them yelling balance, not bias. They can back up <laughs> off of that. But, you know, I think it's worthwhile We'll see. I'm going to keep an eye on it. At least it's not fair and balanced. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I wanted to uh, give a rave to David Folkenflik, who covers the media for NPR, but particularly the uh, coverage he's been giving recently to what's happening at the Voice of America. The Voice of America uh, is unlike many other um, uh, outlets for other countries. Um, it works very, very hard to not be a propaganda outlet, to have a that proverbial firewall between the political administration and the journalists that they do. That firewall is being beaten down by the uh, recent appointee from uh, the Trump administration. And he hired um, a lawyer to come in, a, a man named Samuel Dewey, uh, who had worked for some Republican senators, no journalism experience whatsoever, and assigned him the task of rooting out bias inside the, uh, inside the Voice of America, which he's been doing and in many ways chilling the uh, journalism there. But what I find what's very interesting and ironic is that... Uh, Folk and Flick reported this week that Samuel Dewey has a protective order out against him, filed by, of all people, his father. To uh, His father wants to be protected against Samuel wow. Dewey from coming after him with a gun, which Sam Dewey said he would be interested in using um, against his father wow. in a text message. So not the kind of guy um, you would want. Crazy. Uh, <laughs> in, in all of America. All right, Joanna. Huh, well, I have a rave for people who are willing to pay for journalism right now. Uh, the Athletic is one outlet that when the pandemic began and the sports across the country were shut down, had a legitimate fear that it would go under. They had layoffs and pay cuts, but sports came trickling back and the Athletic came kind of roaring back. They just announced they'd hit their one millionth subscriber. These are people who are willing to pay an average of $64 a year for their journalism. Uh, the Atlantic, which we mentioned earlier, also so had a tough spring layoffs uh, and has, you know, their event business, which is very lucrative, was completely toast. Uh, but they have come back and they've sold about 300,000 subscriptions now, which is way above their projection. People are it's great that people are willing to pay for this good journalism. Let's do local news now. All right. Good. Well, finally, tonight, um, I have uh, not I don't have a rant or a rave because I. Uh, I thought it would be a good time just to acknowledge that this is the 19th anniversary of the September 11th, 2001 terrorist attacks in the United States, states which took more than 3,000 American lives. Days after the Twin Towers tumbled, as you may remember, President George W. Bush stood at the pile with firefighters and first responders when the crowd kind of started teasing him that they couldn't really hear him because he had only this little bullhorn. Here's what he said to them. I can hear you. 
I can hear you, the rest of the world hears you, and the people and the people who knock these buildings down will hear all of us soon. And it took years, but it did happen. One of the things that struck me going back and looking at the video from 19 years ago is how unified the country was. There was no division over how to move forward like there is now, both on COVID, politics, everything else. It's not that we're nostalgic for that, but it was certainly a, a very, very different time. Media was focused, and uh, everybody was doing a great job, and people were in it together. And that is not the case now.